Hello everyone and welcome back to ExtremeRigs.net. Today we are taking a look at Inwin's 805 case. This is a mid-tower, full ATX sized case. However, it's not a giant case. As you can see here on the side, these panels are glass. And this isn't the only glass panel. There's another one on the back and there's another one in the front. Uh, the rest of the case is actually made out of aluminum. So this is a kind of high-end uh, aluminum glass kind of composite case. So let's take these side panels off quickly so we can kind of talk about the features of the case. So these glass panels are held on with four thumb screws. Uh, they're very quick to remove, but you do have to be a little careful handling the glass panel. Despite being careful, we were able to break a panel. Uh, they are tempered glass, but they aren't the thickest glass. This is not the kind of strength of the windows on your car. Okay, so we can now look at the case itself. Uh, this front panel is glass, it is not removable. So you'll notice that there's no airflow that can come in here. There's no side vents on here. You will see the Inwind branding here. This is uh, kind of nice and subtle and it does light up. There's a Molex in the back that you can connect and that powers LEDs behind here. Nice little touch. It gives it a very kind of classy effect while keeping the branding still there. There's also the Inwind logo you can see on the front here. And then there's a kind of subtle hexagon patterning on the aluminum sheet that's kind of behind the smoked glass. Uh, the glass is on the darker side and um, if you really want to see your internals that's going to hinder you from seeing some of the detail. You will need a lot of LED lighting inside your case if you really want to see the detail through the glass. If you're not OCD or perhaps if you are OCD um, and you want to hide some of the issues that you might have in your case if some of the wires aren't quite sleeved pristinely the smoke glass also gives you the chance to kind of take the edge off any glaring errors. So that's also, in some cases, a plus. Uh, the other obvious thing as we look at this case is this front gold panel. There are a few uh, choices you can make here. And that you don't have to buy the gold version. There's also a red version and a black version. Um, and you'll see there's quite a few di different I.O. ports on here. You've got two USB 2 you got a headphone, you got a microphone, you got one USB 3, and you have a USB 3.1 Type-C. This is the new USB connector that's bi-directional. So this is really good. If you're looking for a future-proof case, uh, you're really gonna want one with this kind of connector on. Then there's two little LED pinholes here, one for hard drive and one for uh, power. And that's also really good because, you know, on, on a kind of subtle classy of case, you still want that information, but you don't want something really glaring at you. Then lastly, there is a power switch, which has a very kind of meaty feel. Uh, you can kind of hear it clicking there. There is no reset switch, and that's less of a problem these days. Back in the day, you really needed a reset switch. These days, you can just push and hold. Uh, and if you've got problems worse than that, then you're probably pulling the case out and um, turning the power supply off anyway. From the front I.O., you have all these cables. And you'll notice that they are all black. We like that. Uh, some of them are just kind of solid, kind of plastic, while other ones are sleeved with, with braided sleeve. At the end, however, you can see some of these cables, like this USB header, you can see the wires are not black. So as they come out of the sleeve before they hit the header, there is a small section where they do have colors. Uh, likewise on the back, you can see there's a lot of uh, cable routing cut cutouts here, and you can see there's also some little clips here. These clips are actually sticky backed clips, um, and they come in the box. There's about five, I think, of these inside the box, and so you can uh, uh, stick these on the back anywhere you'd like. Uh, these two I placed myself. These are not kind of pre-attached for you. Uh, and they really help with the cable routing. And cable routing will be important on this case because this side is glass. Your cable routing will be exposed. So you're going to need to to really think about that. Um, in addition for the cable routing, there is about an inch worth of clearance at the back here between the, between the tray and the glass. It's enough, but it's not as much as uh, we would really ideally like. If you're gonna be running uh, sleeved extensions or something like that, you're gonna have a hard time putting all the connectors back here with that kind of space. However, like I said, cable routing is important, so you're probably gonna to wanna to do a full sleeve on a power supply anyway. 
you may also notice these uh, three sections, if you've kind of got eagle eyes, um, these are SSD mounts. So uh, one th thumb screw pulls it off and then you can mount an SSD to this. And that's really rather nice. There is a fourth one as well on the other side. And that attaches to the hard drive cage mount. So again, lifting this up, uh, right on top of here uh, is the fourth SSD mount. And beneath it is two regular size three and a half inch hard drive cages. Uh, these pull out, uh, and these are kind of on the flimsier plastic side, but they're good enough. In addition, this little hard drive cage can be moved. If we take a look at the inside front here, you'll see there's two big fan mounts here. Uh, and this panel actually comes out, and if we do that real quick, there's two thumb screws that hold it in. And this is essentially a radiator mount, like we've seen on Case Labs cases. So this really makes your life easier if you're water cooling or if you're using an all-in-one kind of closed loop um, cooler. So you can see um, it's got a few different mounting holes here. Uh, this fan size cutout is actually for two 140 millimeter fans. So this works with standard size 280 millimeter radiators. Um, and it also has cutouts for 240 millimeter radiators. Uh, and lastly, there's some extra holes here that allow you to move the hard drive cage. You can rotate it and flip it on the front here. So if you're not water cooling, you can move it out the way. Uh, and one of the benefits of that is it lets you get better air access to the air inlet. And the air inlet is at the bottom of the case here. There's this little uh, mesh filter that's magnetic. And you may think, wait, you told me this case was aluminum and it is. So what Inwin did was to um, punch in magnets into the base here. So there's one magnet at each corner and that's, you see how this won't stick to the rest of the case. It only sticks in place there. So uh, this air intake at the bottom, it has mounts for 120 millimeter fans. So you can mount two 120 millimeter fans there if you want to. And you probably do if you can, because it really will help uh, with airflow through the case. Because this is your only inlet, you're gonna struggle to get heat out of the case. Um, the exhaust therefore is set to come out of the back here. In when do supply one fan for this outlet, it's a 120 millimeter fan, and it runs about uh, 1200 RPM. So it's not moving that much air. In addition, you have the power supply at the bottom. Most power supplies exhaust air out of the case. However, uh, unless they're really hot, the power supply fans these days generally don't work that hard because they want to be quiet. The last way to get air out of the case is if you have a graphics card with a blower type air cooler on, where it's going to be injecting the air out the back of the case. Um, if you are running an air-cooled graphics card in this case, we would heavily recommend that you get a card like that. Because if you get a card, where the fans are just kind of circulating the air inside the case, the case can effectively become a hot box. It can trap hot air inside it and it will just get hotter and hotter. So if you're setting up for water cooling, you're gonna be using the radiator uh, kind of quick mount thing here. So you're probably gonna be running your radiators, pushing air through the radiator and exhausting out the back. So the radiator is gonna be mounted on this side. And if we just slide this in here, so the fans are gonna be in this front section and they're gonna try and draw air up from the air intake under the hard drive cages here. And so that's gonna be a bit of a struggle for them to get cool air. The other issue is you're gonna have your radiator sticking out here, which looks fine, but once you mount that, you also need somewhere to mount your pump. And if, you know, there's no drive bay, so you can't use a drive bay type a reservoir and pump. So you're going to be looking at a cylinder reservoir and pump. And so the obvious place to put that is next to the radiator. So we actually set this up with EK's P radiator and then we mounted a DDC type pump with a cylinder reservoir above it uh, to that radiator. And what we found was when we do that, uh, it does limit long graphics cards. So if you have a graphics card 
uh, you know, like a 980 Ti or a 290, uh, sorry, 290X or 390X or something like that, you may run into some issues there. We actually had to drop our graphics card a couple of slots in order to make it fit. So let's take a look at the thermal data. We mounted our 240 radiator in the front and we mounted six probes around that, kind of one on each corner of the, of the fans. Then we mounted four probes to the inlet of the case and that will measure ambient temperatures. We're running Prime 95 on a stock 5820K CPU. So it is a hex core, it is Prime 95, so it's a, it's a fair amount of heat, but we're not even overclocking the CPU. Uh, well, firstly, let's compare the radiator air inlet temperatures to the ambient temperatures. Uh, three of them are in the kind of nine to 10 degree uh, temperature difference region, and that's Celsius. That means that the air inside the case around the radiator, around the intake to the radiator, uh, can be 10 degrees higher. So that's gonna have a definite linear effect straight onto the coolant temperatures and therefore straight onto the CPU temperatures. So if we look at the actual coolant deltas, you can see here the air bench, we were getting about seven degree difference between the coolant temperature and the ambient air. Uh, if we then change to the Inwin 805 case, we're seeing 20 degrees. So in other words, coolant temperatures went up 14 degrees because of the effect of the case. We really should be comparing it to another case. So we also put the same exact hardware, the same exact setup into uh, an NZXT case, the Phantom 530, which is a similar size, maybe a little bit bigger, uh, but it's a case that's just designed with pretty good airflow. It has this big 200 millimeter fan on the front. And so we do see a small effect. We see about two degrees difference there with the Phantom versus a bench because it's getting that kind of warm air from inside the case, but it's still pretty good. So this really shows the Inwin really does have the effect of being a hot box. So in summary, this is a really classy, sleek design case. It really hits a lot of things that we like in uh, contemporary case design. We love the aluminum, we love the glass panels, we love the uh, USB 3.1 Type-C support, uh, and it's got this quick mount radiator which is great for water cooling and uh, all-in-one coolers. So overall we really like the case. We only have two gripes. The first one is really minor that the sleeve doesn't go all the way to the connector on some of the supplied cables so that you can still see some color on the wires. Um, the second one is bigger, it's the thermals. This case can become a hotbox. If you're running any significant power through it for any period of time, you're gonna have a hard time getting the heat out. We'd strongly suggest lowering power, so mount fans at the bottom. Replace this exhaust fan with something that's higher speed and gets more air out of the case. That's it from us. Uh, we gave the case a bronze award. Uh, it was very close, you know, with the thermals. We felt it just had to kind of drop down a notch. So we are pr pretty stingy with our awards. So that's not a bad thing at all. Great case. Big thanks to Inwin for uh, sending it out to review and supporting us. Um, and stay tuned for more reviews from us.